Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to start uh, our discussion on uh, functional programming. And uh, the first thing that we will discuss is really the foundation, the theoretical foundation behind functional programming. Uh, that is to say uh, the lambda calculus. So, uh, the lambda calculus was uh, developed by the logician uh, Alonso Church in the 1930s um, as a mathematical formalism to express computation with uh, functions. And uh, we can briefly have a look here at uh, uh, Wikipedia, Alonso Church. He was, a, he was an American mathematician and a logician who made major contributions to mathematical logic and the foundations of theoretical computer science. And here it says, he is best known for the lambda calculus, among other things. So, and you can have a look at this webpage to get more information about Alonso Church. Now, uh, this is uh, a mathematical formalism to express computation with functions, so no surprise that many functional languages including languages like Lisp and ML, which are languages that we will discuss later in this course, uh, are based on lambda calculus. And uh, the idea of functions, accepting other functions as arguments, comes from this theoretical foundation, the lambda calculus. Now, if we briefly step into Wikipedia on the entry on lambda calculus, it says that lambda calculus uh, is a formal system in mathemat mathematical logic and computer science for expressing computation by way of variable binding and substitution. We will talk about this in more detail. First formulated by Alonso Church, lambda calculus found early successes in the area of computability theory and so on. Uh, Later it says, lambda calculus has played an important role in the development of the theory of programming languages. Now the nice thing about lambda calculus is that uh, the syntax of it is simple. So we are really saying that some, uh, we can look at lambda calculus as a language, as a programming language, and the syntax is extremely simple. And uh, the syntax is actually given here in uh, uh, BNF form or uh, context-free grammar. An expression can be a constant or a variable or uh, expression expression inside parentheses. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, lambda variable expression. This actually should be lambda here. So I fixed it. Now, now it says lambda variable dot expression. Um, so what is meant by constant here? Well, constants uh, are numbers like 0 and 1, or predefined functions like plus or, or multiplication. A variable are just a variable name like x and y. But the third rule here uh, means function application, meaning we're applying a function. So we're applying a function that is on the left-hand side, which the, ex the, the, the uh, uh, non-terminal expression here on the left-hand side denotes, and then the expression here on the right-hand side is the argument to the function. So this is, um, uh, this is called the prefix notation. We have uh, the function or the operation on the left-hand side, and we have the argument on the right-hand side. And then the fourth rule is what is called lambda abstraction. That's the way we use uh, for building new functions. Basically, it's for defining new functions. So if we look at the lambda abstraction, and we look at the, here one example, uh, lambda x dot, and then we have um, plus 1 inside parenthesis, and then we have x. And it's, this can actually be written in a more readable manner by um, skipping some of the parentheses. And we will talk about that a little bit later. But this is equivalent to the expression here, uh, parenthesis open, lambda x dot plus 1x, and uh, parenthesis closes. 
And this is indeed equivalent to the, this expression in scheme, which we will look at later. There's, there's a specific expression in scheme, lambda expression, that has the syntax lambda x, parenthesis open plus 1x, parenthesis closes, which is a way of defining a function which uh, accepts one argument. And what does the code do? Well, it adds one to the argument. So you can see there's a direct relation between the, lambda cal the syntax in, in lambda calculus and the syntax in scheme, which is a dialect of Lisp. So we can look at this expression in lambda calculus as a nameless function which accepts x as an argument and adds 1 to it. No, notice there is no name for the function here. So it's a nameless function. Now we mentioned the syntax, if we go back, this is the syntax of the language and remember that from, this, from the contest-free grammar we should be able to derive a particular string in the language. And we, set, we put forth here that this particular string was in the language. And how can we prove that? Well, we can prove it by using a derivation, as we have looked at uh, in earlier lectures. We have to derive this particular string from the uh, start symbol of the grammar. And we can do that here. So if we start with the... Go back here. We start with the uh, uh, fourth rule here, that an expression can be a lambda uh, abstraction. Then we have an expression can be a lambda variable dot expression. And uh, if we, let's say we, we're applying a leftmost derivation here, then the, uh, the non-terminal -term variable is the one that we're going to uh, uh, look at next or expand. And we can uh, use an x for the variable. So this non-terminal variable becomes the terminal x. In the next step, we expand this expression to uh, a function application. So an expression comes parenthesis open, expression, expression, parenthesis closes. And that's according to the third rule here. An expression can be a function application, the third rule. What do we do in the next step? Well, we take the, we're doing leftmost derivation, so we expand the non-terminal that is uh, the leftmost non-terminal, that's the one, uh, the first expression here, and we apply this rule recursively, so that expression becomes again a function application. So the leftmost expression becomes uh, expression, expression in, inside parenthesis. Then, once again, leftmost uh, derivation. What can expression be? Well, expression can be a constant, according to the first rule of the syntax. And the second uh, expression can be a constant as well. I'm basically doing two steps here in one. Then we look at uh, the, the, the non-terminal that is uh, leftmost, that's the constant here, and that becomes plus. And the second constant becomes 1. So remember that we, we said about constants, constants are numbers like 0 and 1, or predefined functions like plus or multiplication. So the first constant becomes 1, the second constant becomes, sorry, the first constant becomes plus, the second constant becomes 1. Now, in the next step, we expand expression to a variable, and then finally we expand the variable to an x. So here we have derived, or basically proved, that the starting string is indeed a string in the given language. We applied leftmost derivation to derive the string. Now, if we go back first here, uh, this string that we derived is uh, what we called lambda abstraction, according to the fourth rule. 
this is something that we use for building new functions. Now since this is a function definition, there's no surprise that we can actually apply the function by uh, supplying it with an argument. So that's what we're doing in the next step here. We're supplying the function with the argument too. Now if we drop uh, the make it a little bit readable by dropping parentheses. We said earlier that the f uh, lambda abstraction is equivalent to just lambda x dot plus 1x. And then we send 2 or apply this function uh, with the argument 2. So basically what we're doing, we're calling this function with this argument. So when that happens, we send 2 into the function. We can look at it this way. Then we drop the lambda because now it's not anymore a, a lambda abstraction but a, a but a function application. So we drop the lambda and we substitute the argument for all the instances of the x. So that will result in the expression plus one two because our argument, which is two, is put in is substituted for all the occurrences of x and we drop the lambda term. So that's why we get plus 1, 2, and then when we evaluate that, we get 3, because we're just uh, adding 1 to 2. And notice this form here, as I said earlier, this is prefix form, where the operator comes before the operands. Prefix. Now, in some cases, we need parentheses just to eliminate ambiguity. So if we have complex expressions, we might need the um, parentheses to, to, to eliminate uh, possible ambiguities. Um, and according to the syntax as we saw earlier, this expression, uh, parentheses open, lambda x dot plus 1x parenthesis closes should really be written as is stated here with more parentheses. I mean we could we cannot derive the former string from the original grammar but we can derive the latter string from the original grammar. But to increase the readability we often omit parentheses if there is no ambiguity that results from it. So in, in our case there is no ambiguity that results from dropping parentheses in, from the latter string, which results in the uh, expression in the in the uh, in the uh, f sorry. Th there is no ambiguity from dropping parentheses in this latter string, yes, uh, resulting in the expression in the in the f former string. And uh, the basic operations of lambda calculus is really the application of expressions or application of functions. So here we have this uh, uh, example or actually a little bit different. Here we had a function that adds one to its argument. Here we have a function that also adds once to its argument, but the the the, the argument is uh, comes before the constant, whereas in the previous function the argument comes after the constant. But of course the result is the same. So when we send two to this function, it equals plus two one. And what are we doing? We're substituting the x for two and throwing the lambda away. So we are, this is just really applying the function with the argument too. And historically this is, this is called beta conversion. Beta conversion. Now, uh, if we look at variables in, in lambda calculus, uh, we say that a variable in an expression that looks like this, lambda x dot e, where e stands for an arbitrary expression, uh, the variable x is said to be bound by the lambda. It's bound by the lambda. And the scope of the binding is the, is the expression itself, the expression e. Uh, but we can also have unbound variables. And in that case, they are said to be free. So if we look at this example, we have lambda x plus xy. 
the x so notice what the what is the expression is plus x y that's our expression e up here it's plus x y and the x is bound the x is bound by the lambda whereas the y is free there's nothing in this uh, lambda abstraction that bounds the y so the y is free whereas the x is bound by the lambda so if we supply an argument to this function let's say we apply the argument 2 to this function then as we said earlier we substitute every occurrences of x of the bound variable here uh, with uh, the arguments so and we throw away the lambda so we get plus 2y plus 2y so this expression what does that really denote plus 2y well it, it is a a function plus that accepts two arguments uh, the constant 2 and y but y is really like a non-local reference in this function so y is uh, inside the function here in the lambda abstraction behaves like a non-local reference and this has similarities uh, or, or we can we can emulate this in scheme which is as I said earlier dialect of Lisp we can say define y5 basically defining y as uh, having have as having the value 5 then we introduce a, a, a nameless function I, the using exactly the same manner as in lambda calculus meaning lambda x then parenthesis open plus xy parenthesis closes and then we close the lambda abstraction that opens here we close it here and then we send a 2 to this expression we we send a 2 to this function as an argument 2 is an argument and what will be evaluated then is is t plus 2y and the y behaves like a non-local but the y has been given the value 5 so that's why we get 2 plus 5 which results in the uh, value 7 now it's also important to realize that the same variable can appear many times in different contexts and some instances of the variable may be bound whereas others may be free so if we look at another example here quite a complex uh, uh, lambda uh, calculus expression uh, if we try to understand what's happening here we have a lambda abstraction here lambda x uh, st uh, multi uh, star x y where star means multiplication and then 2 is sent as an argument to that function now when sending 2 as an argument to the function we will get some result and that result becomes uh, the body of the lambda abstraction here lambda y something and then x is sent as a parameter to that function and so on so the the first x here after the multiplication operator is bound by a different lambda than the outer x uh, this x here is bound by the lambda x here whereas whereas the x here this outer x is bound by the lambda x at the beginning of the expression and then the first instance of y here is bound by the lambda y to the left here whereas this y here is free it's not bound by by any lambda so you can see that you know the the same variable name can appear many times and some instances of it may be bound while others may uh, be free
Um, so if we look at this expression, let's try to simplify it using uh, beta con conversion, basically uh, doing substitution. So let me go into some uh, editor here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this original expression. And let me just use uh, backslash for lambda here. I'm going to use backslash for denoting lambda. And uh, what we want to do is try to simplify this expression. And uh, if I just copy it again, when trying to simplify lambda expressions, one has to figure out where do we have lambda abstractions, meaning definition of functions, and where do we have uh, function applications. So where are the arguments to the functions? And we can see here that 2 is an argument to this function here. So let's start with apply, uh, doing function application. That means that we substitute the 2, sorry, we substitute the x with the argument 2 and we drop the lambda. So basically we drop the lambda, so we have removed this part. Notice that I'm removing the parentheses as well that start the lambda abstraction. And every time that we have an x in this expression, I put 2 instead. Well, that means, of course, I have to remove the argument and the closing parenthesis. So this is what I have as a second step. And uh, it's always good to count the parenthesis that see if one has uh, one has opened as many parentheses as one has uh, closing parentheses. So we have four open paren and we have one, two, three, four closing paren. So this looks fine. So in the next, and let's see if this actually is the same as we had here. We have uh, lambda y uh, open paren star 2y close close. Yes, star 2y close close. This looks fine. So what would be the next step? Well, once again, we have to try to figure out where is an argument to a function. Well, it looks like we have a function, a lambda abstraction here, meaning a, um, a uh, definition of a function. And then we have an argument on the right hand side to that function. So if we apply exactly the same method as before, meaning wherever we have a y, because it's the, the formal parameter is y, we have to substitute the formal parameter with the value, with the argument to the function. And our argument is the x here. So I should drop the, the lambda. I'm dropping this term, and, I, and again I'm dropping the left paren as well and every time that I have a y I put an x instead because x was the argument but then of course I have to remove the argument and the closing paren. So I've simplified it to this and what I can do now is I can drop unnecessary parentheses for example notice here we have parentheses open parentheses two open paren and I have two closing paren here. So let me actually drop the outer one here and I haven't changed really uh, anything. So this is what I 
end up with? I have a lambda expression. I have a lambda uh, abstraction here. This is a function definition. It is a function that multiplies its argument with 2. We can see that the formal parameter is x. So whenever I will call this function, I will substitute the x with that value. So this is a function that multiplies its argument with 2. That's this part here. And then adds a y to that result. And the y is a non-local reference. The y is a non-local reference. So it's basically doing this 2 times x plus y. And notice that the y is free. y is not bound by the lambda. So y is in a non-local.